so that's a quick overview of some of the modules that are in here and the basic architecture that I've designed for this polyphonic instrument. Now I'm just going to give you a quick sense of what's in the controller in the bottom part of our case. So in the top row of the bottom mantis case, on the far left, we've got some malts that are used, buffered malts that are used to spread out the one volt per octave frequency voltages for the oscillators and the filters. And then we've got the Dofer A190-5 polyphonic MIDI to CV interface. And then as we move towards the right, we've got a bunch of extra modules that are in here just waiting to be patched. Things like some extra um, attenuators, some passive things. There's some clocking modules in there. The new quad clocked Dofer... Um, random module is in there, the Intelligel Shifty, which I chose because it's a, um, it's a great sample and hold style hocketing um, device with um, shift register features, but it has four outs, not just the standard three that you often see on the analog um, uh, modules. And then there's a couple of balance modulators in there that can be used as ring modulators. There's a disting in there and another set of four LFOs that I use for vibrato and other things. And then over here is just really a whole bunch of voltages that come out of the system that I use for these passive faders to control the um, uh, the uh, functions of the modules that I want to get to easily. So on the bottom row of the Mantis, I've got some switches on the far left-hand side that control whether or not I'm sending velocity onto the amps or the filters, or I can have velocity turned off, and then I've got an initial level knob that lets me control the gain coming out of that amp and in through the final filter and the effects. And then I've got a bunch of faders. On the far left-hand side, the, the very first fader is basically an easy way to control the frequency of the final stereo filter that's at the output, so I can ride that fader as I'm playing it. And then I've got two pulse width faders. So these two faders send static voltages through the switch, like I said right at the beginning, to control the pulse width of both of the oscillator modules if I'm not sending some kind of dynamic voltage like an LFO or a voltage or a rather a um, ADSR to con control it. So to hear that in action, if I go here to the end crossfader, pull it down so that we're listening to voice number two, layer number two on the bottom, we can hear that I've switched that oscillator using its crossfaders to square waves. I'm passing through the filter, which I've now got set to be high pass filters using these switches here. I flip the envelopes over to be inverted so we can hear the inverted envelopes controlling that filter and we're listening just to that second layer. So we're hearing the square wave from those oscillators. But if I go to my oscillator to pulse width and I bring this fader up, You can hear as I shift all four oscillators towards a thinner, reedier, pulse width sound. And that's because I've got the bottom part of this voltage controlled switch set to be under manual control. If I hit the little button and flick it over, then this filter ADSR will also be sent over there. It's multed and shoots its way polyphonically through this switch, so then it'll control each um, voice each of the pulse width, um, each of the pulse width range for each voice polyphonically, and then we would hear that instead. So that's how I'm able to change pulse width, have control over that. And then as I move my way to the right, I've got two faders that control the vibrato for the two oscillators. And the polyphonic oscillators from Dope for have some great features for macro control, including some FM inputs that control the whole module itself, so all four of the oscillators. So I'm using a couple of the LFOs from my Dope for Quad LFO little mini version here, and I'm sending them to two faders. So on voice number two, if I bring up oscillator two vibrato,
and I can set the depth of this fader simply by tweaking the master incoming voltage control knob on the module itself. So if I go pull the pulse width back down, we we're listening to square wave. There I've added a little bit of vibrato to it. If I bring up the crossfader so that we're listening to voice number one, now we're listening to um, the pulse width oscillator modulated by LFOs. I can add vibrato to that simply by bringing up oscillator number one vi vibrato. And you can hear some of that in there. And then moving along, I've got a bunch of sliders whose job it is to control the filter. So I've got one that controls the filter frequency, so that's essentially the cutoff offset for f all four of filter ones. And then I've got a fader that controls the key track, and it does it again using this bank of VCAs that's hidden under all these cables. It shoots the key track information from the MIDI to CV in info or from the MIDI to CV interface into those VCAs and then this opens up those VCAs and sends those voltages polyphonically to the filter. And then I've got a fader that controls the envelope amount that so that's controlling how much of this envelope controls that filter polyphonically and then we're into filter number two. So I've got a fader that controls the offset of all of these. So I'll go back to filter number two There, I'm closing it. And there, I'm opening it back up again. And then this one controls the um, res resonance. And then this final fader I use to send things like noise or LFO or other kinds of random signals into the bus that controls the frequency response of all of filter number two. So that's just a way that I can get other kinds of signals in there. So then there's a listen to both layer number one and layer number two. Slow all of this down a little bit. Please consider joining my Patreon to help me make more modular music and continue to make more videos. Please like and subscribe. I can always use some more subscribers. Happy patching everybody out there, and we'll see you next time.